In recent years, our understanding of the World Economic Forum and central banks has evolved dramatically. They perceive themselves as the stewards of the planet with a mission of slowing global warming and ending world hunger and poverty, to name a few. Recently, the WEF has come under intense scrutiny. As the veil of secrecy surrounding their operations has been lifted, a wave of informed discontent has swept across the public. The WEF meets annually in Davos, Switzerland, with attendees ranging from policymakers to top business people flying in on their private jets. Central banks are experiencing a rapid decline in support, with their backers retreating and humanity celebrating. We now stand at a critical juncture where the resistance against their agendas has reached a tipping point, leaving the WEF and central banks teetering on the edge of collapse. Hi. Allow me to welcome you to another video of Finance Sense. We cover all the latest trends in the financial markets and the economy. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new to our channel, and turn on the notification bell to keep posted. With that being said, let's start. We have all known for quite some time who or what the World Economic Forum or WEF is, what they strive for, and how far they are willing to go to carry out their plan for the Great Reset. But as the general public has grown more informed, we have also grown more enraged. People are fighting back, and the resistance has been increasing for some time, bringing us to what may be a turning point—a point from which there is no turning back. It is no longer possible for the WEF and those in authority to exert influence from behind the scenes. Instead, they need to make an effort to persuade everyone else of their noble intentions. But things aren't going so well. The World Economic Forum and central banks have witnessed a remarkable decline in support, as a result of its supporters slithering back into the pits they came from and mankind rejoicing. The WEF is now on the verge of collapsing, but the WEF's demise has only just begun. This story is far from done. Since their inception, central banks have always operated under the guise that they were there to do good. That they are necessary, and that our financial systems would not work without them. For a very long time, a lot of people, in fact, a large number of people, thought that this was true. But in 2023, things have changed drastically. The mask has definitely started to come off. It all began in 2008 when the housing bubble popped and prices began to drop dramatically. Banks with excessive debt defaulted, triggering the start of the world financial crisis. The Federal Reserve, or Fed, intervened to prevent more damage since the contagion was so massive. They started the quantitative easing program, which is nothing more than money printing. The outcomes weren't great, but they are also not terrible. It took years to get things moving again, as the recession was so severe that not even printing a few trillion dollars would do the trick. However, things gradually settled down, and we experienced a massive bull market. Since everything was financed by debt, the majority of the quantitative easing we observed flowed directly into asset values. High asset prices didn't correspond with high costs to acquire those assets, since interest rates were back down at zero percent. Because of this, inflation stayed at a low level. However, in 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic began, and the whole globe immediately shut down, putting the economy on the verge of experiencing the biggest collapse in human history. And once again, the Fed and other central banks intervened to save the day. But instead of printing one or two trillion dollars, they printed ten trillion dollars and kept going for nearly two years. They injected an incredible amount of liquidity into the system to the point where it is physically impossible for asset values to go down. To sustain the economy and continue to spend high, the U.S. government comes forward and essentially tosses money from the roofs. But this is when things start to go wrong. Anyone could see that inflation was imminent and that enormous money printing was not possible without inflation following. However, the government, the Fed, and the mainstream media claim that we're all simply paranoid. But pretty soon, inflation does start to increase. Numerous independent economists and investors have issued dire warnings about the future. The Fed then takes the initiative. They contend that high inflation figures are just a monetary blip and a rounding mistake and shouldn't be taken seriously. However, six months later, CPI readings had risen significantly. 
The Fed then adopts a different strategy and refers to inflation as transitory, which effectively suggests it won't last. Since inflation is not real, it is not necessary to take any action to combat it. They held on to this absurd position for six months until they were forced to concede they were mistaken and that this inflation was real. However, they refused to accept responsibility for their actions, blaming Putin and greedy companies for driving up prices, which clearly had nothing to do with the trillions of dollars they created out of thin air. Consequently, rate hikes began, which caused the economy and markets to tremble. What's going to happen becomes apparent quite quickly. To correct their own monetary policy mistakes, the Fed has no other choice except to plunge the country into a severe recession. Furthermore, it is clear that only the Biden administration would dare to mislead us about the facts. The Fed has embarrassed itself and shown that it is an enemy of the ordinary citizen. By keeping asset values high, they were able to preserve the riches of the wealthy rather than the economy. If it were about the average individual, they would have ceased creating money after the work was completed. In addition, they would not have been exposed to engaging in insider trading while earning millions from their powerful positions. However, they did not act in the interests of the people. If they were concerned about the inflation, as soon as it began to escalate, they would have pulled their foot off the gas pedal. But it took them a whole year to even acknowledge that inflation was a concern, and even then, they only changed course because the investors were scared off by the possibility of inflation, which led to a decline in asset values. Therefore, they had no other option. The credibility of the Fed has been irreparably damaged, and more people are now aware than ever of the fraud that central banks are. This is the beginning of the end for the ruling class and the oppressive systems we all live under. All of this knowledge should be blindingly evident to everyone, yet the mainstream media stayed curiously silent, almost as if they were afraid of what may happen if they dared utter the truth. So why are companies like the New York Times so set on keeping up appearances? Why are TV stations unwilling to inform their audiences of these outstanding facts on the actual causes of the current state of economies? The fact that these media outlets are supported financially by people who initially created these issues may have something to do with them remaining silent. And these people also have enormous power over YouTube and Google. The World Economic Forum, also known as the WEF, is a second worldwide cabal that is dangerously close to falling apart. The WEF has now existed for many years. Every president and prime minister in the world would attend the Davos meeting each year. The CEO of every S&P 500 listed firm, every billionaire, and every major investor would also attend. They also concluded some interviews, but most of what they discussed stayed confidential as they collaborated. However, both American President Biden and British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak skipped the Davos summit the previous year. They stopped going because being associated with individuals who wish to restrict everyone's freedom is an automatic defeat for an election. Luckily, we all still live in democracies and the tide is beginning to turn. People are now aware of what the WEF is and their feelings toward it are generally negative. Therefore, our legislators are forced to withdraw and skip the meeting entirely. In addition, Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, is likely to challenge Donald Trump for the Republican nomination and perhaps even the presidency in the upcoming election. He has already shown a desire to openly oppose the WEF, and for Klaus Schwab, everything is coming undone. He was so close to achieving his goal of gaining total control, but he failed because he was so insufferable. Everyone is bound to despise him and all he represents. Hi. It looks like you've reached the end of this video. Thank you for watching thus far. Please subscribe and give a like if you enjoyed it, and comment your thoughts in the comments section below. This is Finance Sense, helping you keep up with all the latest trends in the financial markets and the economy. See you around!